Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Round the Code. Now today we're going to be looking at setting up a SQL Server database and an ASP.NET Core web API in Azure. Come the end of this video, you should have successfully been able to set up a server and also set up continuous integration through Azure DevOps. Now this continues our new series where basically we're going ahead and setting up applications in Azure. What we did in part one is we went ahead and actually created the repos in Azure DevOps. And in part two, we're basically going to be integrating the two together. So basically, we're going to take a repo from DevOps and put it into Azure. And we're going to be doing that for the web API. Now, for more coding tutorials, ASP.NET Core coding tutorials, visit roundthecode.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode. And follow me on Twitter, it's at Round the Code. Now let's go ahead and set up our database and our API servers in Azure. So now we're in our Azure portal. The first thing we need to do is we need to create an actual database server. So what we do for this is we go to SQL servers and we go into this option and we're going to set up a new one. So this is actually going to create our actual server. And then later on, we'll actually create our database in there. So we just click on add. So we need to set a subscription and a resource group, which has already been set for us. So we now need to call it a server name. So we're going to call it round the code, like so. We're going to select UK South once again. And now we need to give it an admin login and password. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There we go. So that's all done. So we're going to go on to the next set. We need to basically allow Azure services to be able to communicate with the database. Otherwise, our API is just not going to be able to work if it can't communicate with the database. So we're going to select that and set it to yes. So we're not worried about that. Go through. And this is going to go ahead and now create our database server for us. And it will take a few moments. So there we go. Our deployment, our server's now been set up in Azure. It took nearly 10 minutes, so it can take a little bit of time. So you have to be a little bit patient. But it's all set up for us now, as you can see. So we can now go to resource. Now what we need to do now is we basically set up the database server. So now we need to basically export our database into this database server in Azure. So what we're going to do is we've already loaded up our local database server in SQL Server Management Studio. So we're going to find the appropriate database. We're going to go to Tasks, and we can go to Deploy Database to Microsoft Azure SQL Database. So we go ahead and click on that. So we need to connect to the actual server. So we've got it there. We need to put the password in. And now, basically, what we need to do is we basically need to sign in to our Azure account so it can actually basically give us access to it. So we go ahead and do that. We also need to add a firewall so it will basically allow our IP address to actually go through. So we're going to set that up and press OK. OK, so we've got a successful connection with our Azure database. So we've gone ahead and done that. And now we can go to the next part. So it's gone to the summary page here. And now we can just click and press Finish. And now that's basically going to go ahead and export the database for us. OK, so that's imported for us now. So all is good with that. So we're just going to check and make sure that it actually appears in here. So we're going to go ahead and log into it. So this is our database on Azure. Got our login credentials on there. So it's gone ahead. We go into, yeah, there we go. You can see not only has it got our database, but if we have a look at the tables, make sure we've got some data in here as well. So yeah, let's have a look and see what data we've got. Let's look in the team table. So there we go. Yeah, you can see we've got some data there. So now we're in our SQL Server again. We need to now go into the set SQL databases. And so you can see we've got a database set up there. We now need to basically get the actual credentials, the connection string line. So we'll be able to use it in our API. So we can go ahead 
click on the show database strings, copy it, and we're just going to make a note of it in Notepad++, like so. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we now need to set up our API. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new API app, like so. So we're going to call it roundthecode.crud API. And we don't have a dot in there. It's not allowed dots in the actual app name. And we're going to use the resource group of round the code. And we can go ahead and create that. So that's going ahead and creating it for us. OK, so you can see now that that's successfully created for us. So what we can do now is we go into resource. So the first thing we need to do is we basically need to set up the connection string with our SQL database. So in order to do that, we go into settings and configuration. So we've got our connection string down here. So we need to go ahead and add that in. So the name of it is CRUD API DB context. That's what we're using in our actual application. And we're just going to copy in the actual connection string. We just need to go ahead and update the password. Make sure it's set to SQL Server and we can press OK for that. So that's that set up. Next thing we need to do is we need to go into general settings. So we need to make sure it's a .NET Core because it's a .NET Core Web API. We're going to set that to 64 bit and we're going to set WebSockets on as well. So if you're using Signal R, Signal R relies on WebSockets, so you do need to turn that on. And I think that's okay. We don't need to change anything else. We don't need to worry about the default documents or path mapping. So we can go ahead and save it. So whenever you make a save to these actual configuration changes, it actually restarts the server for us. So the next thing I want to do is I want to basically set up continuous integration. So in part one, we set up an Azure DevOps repository for the API. What I basically want to do is that when we deploy it, deploy a change to master, it automatically deploys the changes onto our server that we've just set up here. So the way we can do that is we go into the development and development center. So this is the nice thing about Azure DevOps. You can use, sorry, for the um, actual deployment center in Azure, you can use Azure DevOps, or you can use one of the other ones like GitHub or Bitbucket. You don't have to use Azure DevOps if you don't wish to. So we click on Azure repos and click continue. So we're going to go for a Azure pipelines. And so this is our organization. This is what we set up in Azure DevOps, which we did in part one. We go ahead and do that. And then we've got our two projects once again that we set up. We're going to select CRUD API. So it's just going ahead and validating that. So we've got our repository in there, CRUD API. And we're going to set it up to master. So what basically this is going to do is every time there's a commit to master, it's basically going to do an automatic deployment to this server. So we set a web application to ASP.NET Core and we can click continue. Happy with the changes there, let's click on finish. And that's going to go ahead and set up our deployment. So as you can see there, it's now set up our actual continuous integration. So what will happen now is basically it will trigger a command to Azure DevOps to basically build the project and copy it over to this server. So if we go and click on release pipeline, As you can see, it's set up a pipeline in Azure DevOps. So what's happening at the moment is that it's running this pipeline here. And I can show you this has been set up as a result of what we've just done. So it's running the job at the moment. So if we click in here, it's basically got all these tasks that it needs to do. Once it's done all that, it will basically publish it to the Azure server and we'll be able to run our API. OK, so it looks like it's all done. It's published it off to the Azure server, the API server. Let's see if it's going to work. So it's already been set up on round the code CRUD API 
www.azurewebsites.net. Let's go ahead and see if our API is going to work. Okay, so it's still in the process of actually deploying it, but it will get there very soon. So now that it's actually run the actual build, it's actually now doing the release. So if we go into pipelines release, you can see the release is actually running at the moment. You can see it's actually doing something. So if we click in that and just see what's actually going on. So yeah, you can just see that it's in progress. So we'll come back once it's done. As you can see now it's done. So hopefully our API will actually work. So here we go, we've got Swagger on our API. We've got a couple of uh, methods that we can test out. You can see it's running on our Azure server now, which is good. So let's just give it a test and see if it, because at this point, the Swagger documentation runs off a static index.html page. So it's not gonna have any connection to the database. So if we check ID of one, as you can see, we've got a 200 response there. So that's all good. We know that the API is working and we also know it's successfully connected to the database. So our next task is we're basically going to be setting up our Blazor WebAssembly application in Azure. We're going to be looking at continuous integration as well for that particular application. That's all coming up in part three, so make sure you check it out.